Welcome to the Roofing Roundtable podcast, hosted by David Griggs, the owner of Granada Roofing. In this podcast, we dive deep into the world of roofing with a particular focus on premium roofing and exterior product applications. Now it's time for the latest episode of the Roofing Roundtable, a free donation production coming to you from the Caddo Office's Reimagined Studio. What's going on, guys? I'm David Griggs. I'm your host of the Roofing Roundtable. This is episode three, and today I wanted to talk to everybody about what do you do after a hailstorm? Let me set the stage. You've just picked up the kids from school. You're on your way home. It's beautiful. It's sunny. It's hot outside. And then out of nowhere, within an hour, you just notice everything changes. It's now cloudy. It looks ominous outside. And within an hour, boom, you get hit with this massive Texas size hail. And you take shelter, you do everything you have to do. You walk outside and you see limbs on the ground. You see leaves everywhere. You look at your car, the car is destroyed from all the hail. And the last thing you're probably thinking about is the roof. A lot of times you don't even know that there's anything going on with the roof until all of the roofing companies start swarming your neighborhood and people are knocking on your door left and right. That's typically whenever most homeowners go, oh my gosh, I've had 10 people knock on my door today. Maybe I need to go to the next step. So what do you do next? A lot of people think just call the insurance company, call the insurance company and have them come out. Here's the thing about that. What happens if the insurance company comes out and you really didn't have that much damage? (laughs) At the time of this video, we've recently here in Texas in the DFW area, we've had three, four, five hailstorms come through. And a lot of the roofs that I've got on, they really weren't that bad. And there was no reason to file a hail claim. So if they would not, if that particular client would not have called me first, it would have looked like on their policy, and I'm not an insurance guy, but it looks like they filed a claim and nothing happened. And now they have this little you know notch on their record. My recommendation would be, Call a roofing contractor that you trust, call Granada Roofing Exteriors, and uh, let me walk through some steps of what we do whenever we come out to your house. <clears throat> Number one, whether it's myself or one of my sales reps, we're going to come out and we're going to do a free roof assessment for you and property assessment. When we come out, we're looking at everything. We're looking at gutters. We're looking at the fence. We're looking at the window, the window, window beating. Did you have a busted window that we need to cover for you? We're gonna get on the roof. We're looking for significant hail damage. Let's be clear. We're not looking for onesie twosie hail hits on your your house. We need to describe to the insurance company how this storm that just came through damaged your entire property. We take a ton of photos. Going to step two. That's where we wanna sit down with you and we want to describe all the photos, all the damage that we found. We are then going to recommend to you if you should file a hill claim or not. That's where we will get with you. We'll find out who your insurance company is. We can help you call the insurance company. If you don't know what to say, we can also help guide you. So whenever you are talking to the insurance company, so now let's just fast forward. Let's say that we have now identified there's damage across the property. There's enough to file a hill claim. Now what do you do? You got to call the insurance company. I always tell homeowners, don't give them too much information on the front end. Reason being, I feel like it's kind of like poker. You really want the insurance company to come out and see what they find first. And that's part of me being there with your adjuster, walking around with them just in case they miss something. I want to be able to have a conversation right then and there and say, hey, like, you know, you walked right past this skylight that's broken just make sure it's in the paperwork you don't want to show too much up front yes give them the date of loss they're going to ask for that i don't even really think that you need to submit pictures to them and i always just tell everybody minimal information minimal information so now the adjuster is coming to your house um this is maybe 24 48 hours they've now scheduled it i want to be there with the adjuster I want to be there just like what I said a second ago. We want to walk around the entire property with him. We want to get on the roof with them. And not that they don't know what they're doing by any means. We just want to make sure that 
like I said, they don't accidentally walk by a uh, busted light near the garage and, you know, just because they're looking at a million things and they just overlooked it, I want to stop them. Hey, did you see that? Um, that's our job. We're just there advocating for you so that we can get everything that was damaged covered in this hail claim. So we've walked around with them and yeah, we're looking for anything extra. We're looking at the fence with them. We're looking for everything that basically would get picked up on a claim. Let's fast forward now. So now let's say that the insurance company comes out. They've said, all right, guys, this is the initial documentation of what we're going to pay for. That is where we now sit down with you in your home or over the phone. And I want to go through all the claim documents with you. I want you, the consumer, to know exactly what's on there. If there's any work that we're not doing, let's just say maybe you're a little handy and you want to be the one to repaint, you know, the fascia or stain the fence. That's great. We need to make sure and back all of that out of the claim documents so that we're getting to the total that it needs to be uh, for what you would owe. So, yes. So then now we get to do the fun stuff. We've got a contract together and we get to go and pick uh, shingle colors or if it's a tile roof, we can come do some demonstrations for you. We can do mock-up boards. Um, that's typically more for premium residential where, where we would do mock-up boards. But this is where you get to pick your shingle color. We can go over shingle brand. If there's anything you want to upgrade to, you want to upgrade your, your ventilation system, you want to upgrade to a class four system. We can go over all those details with you to make sure that you're getting the proper shingle and coverage that you're looking for on your property. Usually we can get a roof installed within a week or two. Uh, during busy season, I say give it, give us a week. And we are at that point doing the install. Installs on a normal size house is going to take a day. You know, maybe unless you have like an 80 square house, it might take two days. We're going to cover everything for you. Make sure that the property's protected. Make sure your windows are protected. It's definitely a messy job. It's construction. Debris coming off. Shingles are coming to the ground. We always tell everybody, you know, if you've got pets, if you can put them in doggy daycare for a day, that's always a good, you know, recommended thing just because it's loud. Yes, so we're going to finish the install. We're going to make sure you're taken care of. We always do a walk around with the client just so that they can see everything that we've done. And uh, you're happy with what's going on. If you have any questions, let's address it then and there. Once we've finished the roof, now we move on to the insurance company and we send them photos. We send them, you know, an invoice and, hey, we're done. And that's where they release what's called the recoverable depreciation. Once they send you the, re the recoverable depreciation, at that point, we're done. We're picking up that final check. You're getting our warranty. You're getting some final paperwork from us and you are good to go. And at the end of the day, it sounds simple. It can be difficult sometimes depending on the insurance company. But here's the thing at the end of the day, if, if you have enough damage on the house, it really shouldn't be a fight with the insurance company. I would say the majority of insurance companies, except for one or two, we won't name them. For the most part, they're always, you know, they want to take care of you. You're, you're their client. They're not trying to stiff you. And that's where, you know, we're there to back you up if something's short. And not only that, you guys, I mean, you specialize in specialty type roofs. Yeah. Different materials, different. You have a lot to offer that um, is not just the regular install. Correct. And that is where early in the process, and we have that discovery phase, if that's what you want to call it, with a client. And that is where I do want to ask those questions up front. Have you ever thought about upgrading your roof from a normal laminated to a class four? Have you ever, will, will your neighborhood even let you go even more premium and put a Da Vinci or an F wave or something like that? So depending on the neighborhood and depending on where you are, we do ask a lot of those questions up front. So am I correct to assume that as far as the insurance company goes, they just have their basic requirements and you can go from there? Correct. As long as there's damage on the property. You know, if you find one ding on a gutter, they're going to pay for that full length. For the majority of the time, an insurance company is going to pay for all the gutters just because they want them to match. They don't want you to have hodgepodge looking gutters. And at that point, like I said, the roof has been blasted. The, the, the fence needs to be restained and redone. The beading on the windows need to be done. 
they're going to pay for it. Okay. And one last question I have is I'd be a little leery of calling the roofer first because obviously the roofer wants business. Yeah. What keeps you or any roofer from saying, well, yeah, needs a new roof? Well, I think that's a great question. I just went and visited a lady in Plano. Another roofing company came out after the storm that just happened here in Plano. And he told her, your roof is destroyed. You need to call the insurance company right now. So she goes and files a claim. This company comes out and then they basically got up there and said, what are we doing here? There's not enough damage. So now she's trying to switch insurance companies and that company will, the new company doesn't want to bring her on as a client because she has this quote unquote open claim. I got up there without even knowing that information. And I told the lady, hey, like you might have a random hail hit here and there, but you don't need to file a claim. And she was like, David, let me tell you what happened. So then she starts spilling the beans and she was just like, I'm so happy that you were honest with me. You told me I didn't need to file. It doesn't help me now. I should have called you first. But look, just like the next roofing company, do I want to file a claim? Because of course, that's how we make, you know, we do business, but we want to do it ethically. If you don't have damage on your house, we're not going to tell you to file a claim. And that goes back to trust factor. That goes back to um, doing the right thing by people, you know, integrity. You're, you're doing the right thing whenever no one's looking. We, we stay busy enough that I don't need to be desperate and tell people file claims because we're hoping that you get a cool adjuster. He comes out there and buys a roof. I would never do that to somebody. And even if it's on the line, I will tell clients, hey, it, this is a 50-50 shot it's going to get paid for. And you're going into it with expectations and you are making the decision, not me. I'm not trying to sell you into filing a claim. That's where in our industry, we get a bad name or bad rap. Uh, we get to come across as the, hey, we're just, they just tell everyone to file a claim. I'll be honest with you. There are people out there that will do it. They don't care. They'll just tell you to file a claim. You know, um, I don't do that. I agree with you. It is a waste of my time. It's, it's, it's emotionally draining for the client. And now we're leaving a sour taste in, the, in their mouth so that if they had to do this again, they're like, oh my gosh, is it going to be a nightmare again? I just don't ever deal with nightmares. Well, that's it, guys, for episode three. I just wanted to run through some quick steps of how an insurance claim works. If we can help you with anything, please give us a call. I'm David Griggs with Granada Roofing. Let's build something beautiful together.